Hello, welcome to this episode of the Martial Truth, Spirituality and Martial Arts. So, um, one of the members asked me to do a podcast on spirituality and the martial arts. Um, I thought it'd be a good topic. I mean, some people might not agree with that, but I think it's a good topic. Um, I don't necessarily think that the term spirituality has to necessarily be thought of in a religious context within the scope of martial arts training. Uh, I think your own personal um, beliefs are your beliefs, and everybody is entitled to their own beliefs. Um, I find it interesting all the time when someone who's not a person of faith or doesn't believe has a problem with someone that does. Like me personally, um, I'm a Christian, okay, um, but um, I don't care to impose my beliefs on you, all right, or my personal spirituality on you. Um, that's for you to decide, okay? So um, I don't get hung up in which religion is better or which spiritual basis is better. It's not something I um, care to get involved in. I have my own personal beliefs and I keep it at that. However, when it comes to martial arts, I think the concept of spirituality within martial arts is more a personal thing and a thing where we need to be constantly taking a look at ourselves. Um, it's very easy, especially when you're a high don, um, to get caught up in all the BS. What do I mean by that? The um, adoration of your students, um, your students thinking you're, you know, this person, um, you know, like for instance, we have, some of us have this idea and people have this idea that a sensei, you know, is all knowledgeable. Like, oh, I'll go to sensei and ask him for financial advice. Oh, I'll go to sensei and ask him for marriage advice. So I'll go to sensei because I'm seeking that spiritual advice. Like I need him to, mm, yeah, I don't think so. All right. Um, you know, if I feel I know something on a subject and someone asks my advice, I may give it, but I also tell them what my grandfather used to tell me. Um, I'm not charging you for the advice, so I'm just giving you this advice, and you do with it what you want. You don't have to pay any attention to me. I'm no expert on that area. Um, you know, uh, I'm very careful about what I give advice on um, in the dojo. Um, throughout the years, I've had people come up to me asking me for advice on things that... Um, I just felt it was not a good idea for me to involve myself in, um, so I didn't. Um, you know, looking at yourself um, is, a, to me, a strong part of spirituality. What kind of person are you? What are, you know, how do I look at myself? How do I treat others? Um, you know, we have all these moral codes um, in martial arts, um, from the dojo oath um, in Sosui Shitsuru Jiu Jitsu, we have the directions um, where, you know, one of them, uh, an example of, uh, you know, you must, uh, you know, if it's only about fighting, you're fighting the way of the beast, then that's not good. In other words, you have to, you know, another one is you must avoid uh, doing violent words or deeds, so we must have an eternal peace, right? And, you know, that's a very spiritual statement, and I wholeheartedly agree with it. But as I told um, the headmaster's mother when she quizzed me on the directions in Fukuoka, I said, I can't follow that one. And she looked at me and said, well, why not? And I said, well, I'm a police officer. I have to use violent words and deeds to stop criminals from hurting other people. And she goes, oh, no, no. Police officers and military are exempt, right? So, you know, so that's another thing. I mean, we spout these things in martial arts like there's no first strike in karate, right? Every karate kata starts with a defensive move. Yeah, it's, it's telling us, it's giving us a spiritual guideline in that don't go out looking for trouble, right? It's quite simple. Um, you know, think about it. You know, uh, I've had people join the dojo that I could tell were from the get-go were never going to last. 
And why weren't they going to last? Well, because they were attracted to the violent aspect only of martial arts. Um, you know, I like to say I'm, I'm interested in all aspects of the martial arts. You know, um, you, know you read uh, any books, uh, The Go Rin No Show. Um, you know, if you look at the, uh, the Ishinru symbol, the Megami, right? Um, you know, there's things built into that, right? Keep your strength hidden. Show a kindly face to the world. Again, how are you treating people? Um, you know, if you're uh, grooming young female students or children's students in your dojo to eventually um, do things you shouldn't do, you can't tell me you're a spiritual person. I don't care if you're reading the Bible every day or the Quran every day or anything every day. You're not a spiritual person. You're a bad person. And sadly, in the martial arts, we do have a lot of bad people. Um, it would be a fallacy to think otherwise because all you have to do is look. I mean, there's some dojo that the bottom line is all they worry about, and they'll do anything to keep their doors open. Um, I can't consider them spiritual people. Um, there were many times um, throughout my years as a dojo sensei where I told people this dojo was not for you. It just wasn't, and it wasn't for them because they didn't act properly. So that moral compass that we have to have if we're going to teach martial arts is very important. Last night in my class, um, I was showing some techniques. And, you know, I mentioned that it's important to understand what the ramifications could be if you use certain techniques. It's important to understand uh, the laws of the state you're in. Um, and that if I do certain things, well, what could be the outcome for me? Um, and that has to be a consideration. Now, if your life's on the line and you know that if you don't do certain things, you're going to be seriously injured or die, um, you know, then I recommend, well, don't concern yourself with that. The important thing is you survive. But, um, you know, I think if you're doing certain techniques and you don't know when to stop, you don't know when to hit the pause button, um, I think you're lacking in a certain spiritual aspect, meaning you have to take a step back and stay in control, all right? Um, you know, I had a reputation as a police officer as someone that was not afraid of physical conflict. If a criminal picked up his hands to me and tried to hurt me, not a problem. Let's go, okay? But I also had serious rules for myself, which was once the prisoner was in handcuffs, that was it. It was over. All right. Um, didn't matter what he did, how mad I was at him. You know, once he's in handcuffs and he's under control, that's it. It's over. Now, if the prisoner goes to bite you, goes to maybe kick you, headbutt you, and you have to defend yourself even while he's in handcuffs, again, different story. But once you regain control of him, it stops. All right. Um, this is part of the spiritual aspects of your training. Uh, this moral code, the moral compass has to be there. If you lack a moral compass, we have a huge problem. Um, you know, I'll use MMA as an example. MMA, you know, I had this discussion with a senior sensei. There's no art in mixed martial arts. Um, there's no moral code. Uh, you know, they may think there is, but the code is to win, to defeat your opponent, whoever you're fighting that day, okay? Okay. Um, you know, in martial arts, our goal is to avoid conflict. And the more high level you go, the more, uh, the better you get at um, defending yourself and being able to harm another human, human being. I think um, the responsibility grows to try to avoid the conflict at all costs. Um, you know, obviously, you can't always avoid it. But again, if you avoid it, at what point do you stop? Um, you have the person, they're on the ground, they're no longer a threat to you, are you going to continue to stomp them? Are you going to grab the head? Are you going to continue to pound it into the pavement? Um, this shows a certain lack of a moral compass, all right? Um, you know, you have to have um, uh, a strong spiritual belief. Um, you have to have a strong moral center, all right? And constantly, again, take a hard look at yourself. Um, 
you know, and say to yourself, am I, am I the person I claim to be? All right. Um, a friend of mine once said to me that I was the most moral person he knew. Out of all his friends, I was the most moral person he knew. And my response to him was, was well, that's great. I appreciate that. I don't know if that's true, right? Um, I try to be moral, but I'm human. And I make mistakes and screw up all the time, just like everybody else does. Um, I try to learn from those mistakes, and I th think deeply about things, and I try to improve myself, all right? Um, you know, it's important that if you are moral, you don't impose your morality on others, okay? Um, you know, I have certain serious thing, co a code I pro personally live by, but I don't expect other people to live by that code. Uh, that would be wrong. That would show a lack of morality on my part. Um, the spiritual aspect of that is very important. I think the spiritual aspect in martial arts is you should always be thinking about the type of person you are. You know, when I went to Okinawa the first time and I trained with Master Kichiro Shimabuku in Ishinru Karate, um, he told me some very important things that I think fit right into this discussion of spirituality in the martial arts. Um, he said to me, the dojo will go as the sensei goes. If the sensei leads by example, and it's a good example, that's how the students will be. They'll follow that good example, and you'll have good students in a good dojo. If the sensei only talks about martial arts, but doesn't really train and lead by example, mm, sets a bad example for the students. If the sensei eats too much and drinks too much and is fat and only talks about training but doesn't really train, not a good example for the students. And, you know, I took that stuff to heart. And it's true. You know, that was back in 1990 or 91. Um, you know, one of the things that I get complimented the most on when we have, you know, visiting sensei come in to teach a seminar at the dojo is the thing they always say to me is um how nice everybody is you know mike your students everyone's so nice everyone's really nice boy we really like this dojo um i had a senior sensei come into the dojo one time and he was doing a seminar and he's a good friend of mine and you know my students were there and he showed a technique and then he said, all right, go work on it. And they turned to start working on it. And he said, he stopped them and said, when I say work on it, you say yes, sensei. And he was in the front and I was in the back of the dojo and all my students turned and looked at me, like gave me this look. And I went up to him and I said, you know, I said, I said hey, sensei, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but my students aren't gonna do that. I said, what my students are going to do is, when you tell them to work on something, they're going to work on it until you tell them to work on something else. I said, but we don't do this yes sensei, like yelling at it in the dojo. Like, we don't do that here. And he's like, oh, 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 oh okay. All right, all right, Mike, okay. At the end of the day, um, when he finished, he stood in front of the students and said, I just want to tell you guys, this is the best time I've had ever teaching a group. He goes, this was great, and I really hope you'll have me back again. And, you know, um, I could tell, like, he really felt something, like he felt a connection. And the connection was, there was no fake, yes sensei, ooh sensei, every time the sensei says something. There were students hanging on his every word, and when he said to work on something, they went and worked on it. And if one of them was having a problem with a technique and they asked him to come over, he could see the, the honesty and the sincerity in them wanting to learn and wanting to get better. And that's the kind of student I tried to cultivate. And you know, throughout the years, one of my students maybe has done something that wasn't too good, and I felt that he was someone that could correct himself. You know, I've always tried to tell the student to take a look at yourself. 
you have to think long and hard on this. Um, you know, it's important. Uh, so the spirituality, again, is the idea of examining yourself constantly. Um, you know, I don't think um, it's a good idea, my personal opinion, to mix religion and the dojo. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea, in my personal opinion, to mix politics and the dojo. I've always felt that when you walk in the dojo, if, you're, if your life right now is in a very bad place, you've got some things going on, you know, and you just don't feel good, and you, you know, you're worried about things, okay? I always felt the dojo should be a place where you walk in and you can escape that for an hour or two through training. And, you know, through the camaraderie and, you know, the group of people, if they're good people, they might be able to support you in, through your problems. Um, you know, uh, I, I think the dojo should cultivate everybody's spirit. I don't think it should crush the spirit. I think it should build the spirit up. And sadly, I see a lot of dojo where that's not the case. And I've seen them in the States. I've seen them in Japan, um, you know, where there's a lot of crushing of the spirit. And, you know, that's not good. You know, it's like you want the dog to do things because the dog loves you, not because you beat the dog, okay? Now, are there times you have to be, you know, physical with a student? Of course, it's martial arts, all right? You know, some people need to, you know, they, you want them to be able to defend themselves. Sometimes you got to push them a little bit. Understand the, the dangerousness of someone else trying to harm them, all right? Um, you know, but crushing someone's spirit is a bad thing. It's not something you should do. And you see it a lot with martial arts people. I mean, look, I see videos all the time where, uh, you know, a martial arts instructor has got a student standing there and he's punching him in the face with gloves on. Um... You know, he's kicking them, hitting them. You know, I, I mean, this is just utter nonsense, you know. Um, my first instructor tried to crush my spirit. Um, but that just wasn't going to happen, okay. Um, but that experience of him having tried to crush my spirit, seeing how he treated other people, made me realize how I wanted not to be. Um, you know... Throughout the years, I've obviously trained with, I mean, I can't even go into how many different senseis I've trained in, in all the various martial arts. And some of them have been really good people, and some of them haven't. So their lack of a personal spirituality, a personal moral code, the ability to look at themselves and say, um, is this a good thing I'm doing, or is this a bad thing? And if it's a bad thing, why am I doing it? I need to correct myself. But they lack that. They lack that personal spirituality, that ability to look at themselves and question themselves. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? It's very simple, you know. Um, you know, again, religion, bringing religion in the dojo becomes a problem. If you want to do that, that's fine, but you're limiting who can train at your school. You're limiting certain things. Um, the rules apply to everyone in my dojo. So if you come in and you say to me, well, I can't bow uh, to the showman because of my religious beliefs, then I inform you that this is not the dojo for you because bowing to the showman has no religious connotation. Now, if I had a shinzen up in the front of my dojo, a Shinto altar. That has a religious connotation, but I don't practice Shinto, so I don't have that, okay? Um, Tatsuo Shimabuku, the founder of Ishinru, was concerned that he was offending the Marines' religion, religious beliefs, because he had the painting of the Megami. Um, and what he did was he put a painting of Jesus on the showman because he didn't want to offend them. You know, me personally, again, I, I don't, just don't agree with it. Um, you know, you need to kind of have a separation of things, all right? Um, you bring politics in your dojo. If you believe one way, 
you know, if you're on one side of the spectrum and that's what you're espousing all the time, well, you're going to turn off a whole bunch of people in your dojo. And again, you can have, you can talk about religion, you can talk about politics after class is over and people maybe are in the front getting ready to leave. If they want to stand around and talk about what's going on and they want to talk about their religious beliefs, that's great. Um, but within the context of training, um, I avoid it. I don't, I don't have it in my dojo. Uh, I talk about training. I talk about morals a lot. I talk about the moral compass. Um, you know, you have to have integrity. You have to have uh, all these different things, you know, the virtues that we talk about of Bushido, right? Um, you know, and, and again, if you think every samurai was a good person or believed in a strong moral code, I mean, come on. They're warriors, all right? They're, they're not... They're not all good. It's like, it's like um, anything else. You have good and bad and all, right? So in law enforcement, you have bad cops. You have good cops. You have bad doctors, right? You have good doctors, right? So it's the same with martial arts. So if you cultivate a personal spirituality, a belief system within yourself that I'm going to hold myself to a high moral standard, um, then I think it's very easy to be more successful. Um, if you talk a good game, but then your actions show you to be something completely different from what you claim, um, it's going to cause problems, all right? Um, you know, my first instructor was big on that. You know, he'd talk a good moral game, but then his actions would show he was something completely different, that he was not a moral person, that he was a bad person, all right? Um, you know, twice I caught him in the dojo with women that weren't his wife the same dojo I was a business partner in. So he's involving my business in his immoral activities. Now, if he chooses to do that, that's fine. But don't involve me in it. Because now you're bringing me into your dark place that I don't want to be in. All right? So, again, um, you know, the sensei, if you're a sensei, you would need to take these responsibilities serious. Um, you need to look at yourself constantly. Can I make changes to myself to make myself better, a better person? Not just a better martial artist, but a better person. Um, am I doing the right thing by my students? This is all part of the spirituality of martial arts. And again, if all you do is practice the fight, if all you're ever talking about is the fight, the fight, the fight, okay? Um, this is how you hurt this person. This is the technique that works. And you never bring into a moral aspect of it. Okay, well, why would, I, why would I need to do this technique that could result in the death of another human being? Well, it's simple. It's to save another human being or to save yourself. Okay? Um, you know, that's an aspect that needs to be discussed. All right? So my advice to people on spirituality and the martial arts is... is it's really up to you to look at yourself. You know, what do I believe? Am I only teaching the fight or am I teaching the spiritual concepts that will help students to understand when and how and why we might use certain techniques? So, look at yourself. Examine your own values, your morals. This is the important spiritual aspect of the martial arts. Hope you like this one. All right. Um, feel free to comment on it, please. If you liked it, click the like button. Please consider becoming a member. Um, there's merchandise you can purchase. There'll be scrolling underneath this video if you want to check some stuff out. Um, you know, and uh, please click the like button, share it. All right. Subscribe. Closing in on 13,000 subscribers. All right. Um, appreciate all of you and uh, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.